I think the biggest danger would be the material failure. Carabiners breaking, all the swivels breaking. The uh, adrenaline, for me, it's, it's actually kind of similar in that once you step out or step on stage, that's when sort of everything happens. I always try to describe it as uh, it's like swimming only really fast. Yeah, then it's just you and your body that can go in all directions, three-dimensionally. Yeah, it's just a really exciting feeling to have a minute of just being suspended in, in space. My name is David Omer. I'm uh, from Germany and uh, I'm a straps artist. Grew up in uh, Hanover in Germany, a pretty average town and my mom's story would be that I always had a lot of energy and so she was looking for things to occupy me with and there was a gymnastics club uh, down the road and from the age of three or four she would drop me off there and I'd run around and do flips and, and that and that's how I sort of got into gymnastics. I was really into it, I was talented and would grow into a competitive gymnast. It was pretty clear that I was going to get too, uh, too tall for, for gymnastics. So when I turned 16, I realized that my competitors had sort of an edge on me. That was always the, already the first sort of idea that I would have to look into something else to do with it. I didn't want to quit or anything. I spent a year in LA in, in high school as an exchange year. And that sort of also opened up my horizon and my world to what was possible. Coming back from that, I joined a group of ex-gymnasts and rhythmic gymnasts that would put shows together and perform for events on the weekend, still kind of in the gymnastics world. But that's how I eventually slipped into performing and, uh, and started working on straps. From the, basically the first year that I went on stage, that was, that was it. Trajectory was set. I was living very much in the moment, especially in those first two years. Germany has got this really big established variety scene. It was me and three other performers that were sort of this little team that would join different shows and it was very easy to join different productions. One of those shows there was a professional juggler uh, that came from Berlin and he came with the director. The timing was just kind of amazing that he had a show in mind that I could fit in. That gave me a year to, to work on something, which then became the bathtub act. I didn't really think that I, I would ever have the name Bath Boy and I actually was trying to fight it in the first few years. But the Bath Act was the one that always stood out and in the end a lot of people in my position, a lot of circus performers are trying to make an act that is a memorable act, that is something that stands out. <laughs> There was an agent that joined me and was really excited about the bath act. She then got me into the Royal Variety performance in London and I got to perform for the Queen and meet Elton John and this is like my second year in. So that was kind of the point where I realized, okay, this is, this is kind of it now. This is uh, what I'm doing and it's super exciting. And then it was about a year and a half in that we joined a company, an Australian production company in Edinburgh, in Scotland, it's a big international festival. And that's when things really took off because this show just was showered with awards and just people went absolutely crazy about it and I would end up touring with them for 10 years. My first production with Spiegel World was uh, Vegas Nocturne at the Cosmopolitan in 2014. That was a monumental you know, undertaking, this thing, and it was just a very good group of acts and really charming people, and it was just a um, weirdly magical group of people that made that happen. But then they added the gazillionaire and turned it into the absinthe that it is now, which is like satire maybe to what a lot of the other shows are going on in, in Vegas. I think, I think the bath bag is a, is a really good act for this venue because people sit so close. The fact that I have a direct contact to the front row and to the next row spitting and splashing water at people then ripples out into the tent and to the back rows where you know there's this empathy for people getting wrecked and I mean some people are really properly getting splashed but I haven't had anything super crazy where people are super are just actually annoyed by it it's kind of the, the opposite people would try to get into the tub and drink the bath water and like all these weird things I haven't had people really upset about, about it too much 
So to stay in shape for uh, seven shows a week is basically preparing for the act. There's a warm-up routine that I have that is focused on flexibility and strength that, but to support what I do on stage and then just doing the job basically keeps me in shape for that. Having done the act for now 20 years, I'm still having a really good time. I still get my little bit of adrenaline before I go on stage and because of the nature of the bathtub as well, there's an element to it that is always playful and there's still things happening that haven't happened before, which is amazing to me after I don't know many thousand times of doing it. It's kind of amazing. I can still do it and I can still see people in the front row genuinely laughing and, and having a good time and, and that in return makes me uh, makes me have a good time as well. <laughs> that's pretty good. The circus world does feel like a big family. Everybody that's in this world knows that and you're making a home away from home. There's something about this this closeness on stage and off stage where you sort of sometimes forced to make things work. That is a really special special thing. There are Plenty more Circus Town videos to check out and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a trick.